Hey champion and superstars, my name is Eugene Chang from Freedom Profits and welcome to today's presentation on the 12 facts every Amazon seller should know to stay competitive. This is the second part of the presentation and if you haven't seen the part one, you know, you don't want to miss any of it. So go check it out before you watch this video. So there'll be a total of 24 facts plus extra two bonus facts to help you sellers stay competitive within the Amazon marketplace. Now, before we get started, again, I would love for you to do me a quick favor. If you want more insight videos like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can help you create more tutorial videos and help you scale and grow your Amazon e-commerce business. Thank you in advance. Now, I'll be adding a lot of value throughout this presentation and be ready to take notes. And if you miss any important information, always refer back and you know, always come back to this video. So let's, uh, let's rock and roll. So what will you learn today? So that's going to repeat what I said in part one. So, if, you know, in 25 years since Amazon was born, it's now one of the top e-commerce platform in the world and pretty sure there's no signs of Amazon slowing down. You know, they're acquiring more companies, whether it is offline or online. So, Amazon Empire is growing really, really quick. And also we have now entered the year 2020. Happy New Year. And many sellers are currently looking to generate more sales and you know gain a bigger piece of the Amazon pie, just like you and me. So part two of our 12 facts, uh, every Amazon should know to stay competitive, uh, contains a lot of key takeaways at this cutting edge of the industry, you know, plus two bonus facts that you as Amazon sellers should know to stay competitive. Now, note again, I want to make sure that you guys know that these facts are based on Amazon's answers from the hearing of the sub community on antitrust, commercial and admin law um, entitled online platforms and market power part two innovation and entrepreneurship, which you probably seen this in the news sometime last year in July. So let's jump straight to fact number one. So for each month since July 2018, what are the percentage of all space eligible for advertising on Amazon that has been devoted to Amazon's private label products? Very, very good question here. So according to Amazon, there's no advertising space that has been reserved for Amazon's private label products. They say that the type and amount of ads shown to customers depend on many factors such as customer search terms, the product the customer is shopping for, or what they are searching for, and it also depends whether the customer is searching on mobile, desktop, or the Amazon's um, shopping app. So in each month since July 2018, only two to three percent of space eligible for the sponsored products and sponsored brands impression are has highlighted Amazon's private label products. So Amazon's display, display and video programs only show ads for private label products on Amazon when there is no third party ad available. So if there's no you know, third party sellers don't do not run any ads on the platform, then Amazon will show their products, which is pretty fair enough, you know, this fully utilizes space. So fact number two, in categories where Amazon has a private label product, what portion of ad inventory is not available for first party or third party sellers because of ads for Amazon's private label products. So according to Amazon, you know, they do not restrict vendors or third party sellers from ac accessing ad inventory in categories where Amazon has a private product. So that's pretty fair. And Amazon put a lot of emphasis on vendors and third party sellers. So fact number three, what type of ads and ads and ad space does Amazon reserve exclusively for Amazon's private label products? Very similar to question one. Um, so the answer is there's no advertising space reserved for Amazon's private label products. 
However, Amazon decides to use the space in its stores based on a var variety of factors, all centered on what customers would find most helpful. So whether to show ads or merchandising placements on, and also how many depends on many, many variables, including you know, customer search terms, what type of product the customer is, excuse me, is shopping for, and whether the customer is shopping on desktop, mobile or in Amazon's app. So fact number four, what marketing and or promotion services does Amazon offer suppliers or merchants? So here being sellers and vendors. So marketing and promotion services offered by Amazon highlights a lot of brand, brands, offers, products, and you know, to help brands increase product visibility towards customers. So most marketing and promotional opportunities are available to sellers and vendors as a function of a product being for sale on Amazon. So Amazon pays to advertise product from both sellers and vendors on the search engine such as Google and Amazon merchandise products from both merchants through the in-store product recommendations and widgets such as uh, you probably seen it um, so recommended for you or customers who viewed this also viewed so there are a variety of promotional tools that third-party sellers can use to highlight their products such as public, you know publicly publicizingly deal types for price changes coupons um, promotional codes um, these include 24-hour you know, deep discount or high demand products, uh, also known as deal of the day, six hour discounts of limited quantities of products. So it's called lightning deals, extended time discounts, also known as seven day deals, and also coupons as well, which you probably find it in the advertising tab. And also buy X, get Y promotions. So for instance, buy three products and say 20%. So Amazon also offers a range of advertising products and services such as display ads, video ads, sponsored products, sponsored brands to help third party sellers and vendors find, attract and engage with new and also their existing customers. So in general, display and video ads are priced either by real time bidding auction or a sort of cost per 1000 impressions and advertisers are charged for sponsored products and sponsored brands when a customer clicks on the advertiser's ad and the price per click is set in an auction base on advertiser's bid how relevant the advertised product is in the context which is where it will appear and you know the likelihood of the ad being clicked on and other similar factors so you're probably sitting in the back end where you're trying to create your ads your sponsored product ads so you need to enter the bid amount. So how much do you intend to pay cost per click? And Amazon will charge based on that auction base uh, bids. So this is a pretty long one. Um, so fact number five was describe all the ways that suppliers or merchants that do not purchase Amazon's distribution services through FBA are treated differently by Amazon from suppliers or merchants that do purchase Amazon's distribution services through FBA. So what do you think? So Amazon who chose FBA always, you know, they get to enjoy high quality fulfillment services that customers want, including fulfillment and the the delivery mm -hmm. speed. So prime eligibility and seller performance as well. So the featured product preset offer is based on factors affecting customer experience and FBA generally provides a better and more reliable experience for customers, um, Amazon's customers and compared to FBM, which is fulfillment by merchant. So according, you know, the difference may be reflected in the offer that is featured. So fact number six, has Amazon ever used information gathered as a result of a business partnership with another company to guide its product strategy? So has Amazon ever used this information to introduce Amazon products that 
is directly competing with the business partner's product. So according to Amazon, they say that they require, you know, it's selling partners to provide information about, you know, their identity, location, payment methods, product as part of the registration process. Amazon may require additional informa information from such, for this set of products, such as safe testing data or commercial invoices to ensure that these products are safe and these products are authentic. So, however, Amazon prohibits the use of such information and other non-public seller-specific information to introduce to Amazon products that directly compete with its selling partners. So, meaning Amazon does not require disclosure of sensitive information such as customer or manufacturer list as a condition of the registration, which is you know, good for a lot of sellers and you probably realize that. So Amazon will not ask you all these other sensitive information such as where you get, you know, your product from, who is your suppliers, who is your manufacturers. So, which brings us to fact number seven, has Amazon ever treated, threatened, sorry, to either remove a seller from Amazon Marketplace or prohibit the third party sale of a product on Amazon due to a business dispute with that seller in one of Amazon's other areas of business so as described in the standards of brand selling in the amazon store one way that amazon has ensured that a great customer experience is by sourcing directly sourcing all these products directly from brand owners and selling them to customers on amazon so for a limited number of national brands that supply their products to other major retailers for sale by those retailers amazon has elected to source the brand's product for sale by Amazon only. So, I you know this will ensure that Amazon can provide competitive prices, availability, and fast delivery for most popular products on Amazon. And of course, to avoid customer confusion if they have the same product. So as part of a business agreement, Amazon is his, in certain circumstances chosen not to list third-party products for sale on Amazon if those products do not allow customers to access Amazon's services, such as Amazon Prime Video. So fact number eight, has Amazon ever removed the buy box or buy button for products sold by a third party on Amazon? Very, you know, very good question. So since Amazon six is seeking to highlight only offers that is confident will present a great experience for all its customers. There may be circumstances in which a third party offer would be ineligible to be displayed as the featured offer. So for instance, an offer would be ineligible if the third party has a history of providing a really poor customer's experience or if the um, third party seller presents a high risk of fraud or abuse. Similarly, an offer at a price that is really uncompetitive for a product that is not available or cannot ship to a customer's location, then you don't you know you Amazon will remove the buy button. Or for a product which may there be which there may be product quality or customer experience concerns, may be in eligible to be displayed as the featured offer or you know shown in the buy box. So fact number nine, although Amazon market um, Amazon Marketplace merchants generally set this price at which their products are sold on Amazon. In some circumstances, in some instances, Amazon has lowered prices on products being sold by Marketplace merchants, stating that this item is sold by a third party seller. The discount is provided by Amazon. So what does it mean, you know? So please describe how Amazon determines when to alter the customer uh, the consumer facing price on a marketplace product very good question so amazon may occasionally choose to fund a discount to its product to its customers to their customers when the price is set by third party sellers are higher than the prices offered by other stores for the same product so during this instance amazon um, third party sellers receive payment for the order and pay referral fee based on the item price that they set and Amazon will pay for the full discount, which appears as a credit to Amazon's customers.
So, in a win-win situation. Fact number nine, in a one email from Amazon to brand said it, we have made the decision to source your products from sale, for sale by Amazon only and your existing South Century account will be closed within 30 days of this email. So please identify the number of merchants so uh, to whom Amazon has sent this message and sub substantially similar message. For instance, uh, please describe the relevant circumstances, including the recipient of the message and all the reasons for sending it. So what does this mean? So mm, consistent with the standards of brands, you know, selling again in the Amazon store for a limited number of national brands that supply their products to other major retailers for sale by those retailers. Amazon has elected to source the brand's product for sale by Amazon only. And this is to make sure that, to ensure that Amazon can provide you know, competitive prices again, faster delivery availability for the most popular products in Amazon store, and also avoid customers' confusion. Very, very, very similar to fact number seven, I think. So as a result, a small number of brands have received similar emails under these circumstances. So fact number 11, what is the sold by Amazon program? What sellers, you know, which sellers are eligible to join and how Amazon determines which, uh, what price sellers will see for their sales. So sorry by Amazon program this is an invite program that is testing an opt-in consignment program for brand owners. So in story by Amazon program, brand owners choose which product to enroll in SBA and once it's been enrolled, these products are priced and sold by Amazon. So SBA provides for a guaranteed minimum amount that you know, any all these participants will receive for each item regardless of its selling price. So when a customer purchases an item that is being sold through F, um, SBA, so by Amazon, Amazon purchases the inventory from the selling partner and then sells it to the customers. So very similar to like a middleman. So Amazon acts like a middleman. So which is why it's sold by Amazon. So fact number 12, if Amazon suspended suspends a seller without detailing the precise basis for the suspension. How does Amazon expect the seller to remedy the violation and bring itself in compliance with Amazon's policies? This is probably the question that a lot of you want to know. A lot of you want to know. So according to Amazon, you know, they strive to help sellers avoid and correct mistakes that may lead to policy violations. So Amazon makes its policies available to selling partners, provide you know, an entire educational series called Seller University, if you haven't heard of it, and displays real-time account health dashboards that you may see in your seller central account, and also you know, alerts, alerts you know, to help sellers track you know, your performances and get a warning of issues as they arise, you know, if as well, you know, that you have issues. So Amazon also offers a self-service resolution for many issues to enable sellers edit your listings to fix other common problems instantaneously. So similarly, Amazon proactively calls certain sellers when their accounts are at risk and Amazon provides individualized support and a path to address any outstanding concerns before they take action. So that means, you know, you probably made a couple of mistakes and stuff and a series of mistakes before Amazon, before leading up to being suspended by Amazon. And in some cases, uh, according to Amazon, Amazon is required to take swift action to suspend selling accounts that have violated its selling policies to protect both its customers and its selling partners from fraud, counterfeits and other forms of abuse. So sometimes there's no warnings you know, when it comes to fraud, counterfeits and other forms of abuse. Put yourself in Amazon shoes. We would do that as well. You would do that as well. This is to, ver this is to prevent bad actors from abusing Amazon systems. Amazon may limit details about 
what is specifically found it to be violation, but we still provide the seller with an appeal option. It is in the general limited to a set of terrible violations of the stolen identity, credit card fraud, etc. So I don't know, you still have an appeal option, but a lot of times you don't really go through. So please pay by Amazon's rule because you know don't try to cheat the system and also because Amazon regularly audits this account level enforcement actions and the justice approaches where it identifies mistakes or opportunities to help honest sellers like you and I <laughs> that maybe inadvertently violated his policies so I've got a special gift for you you know who are watching this two bonus facts that I promised earlier so bonus fact number one, does Amazon advertising allow first party or third party sellers to bid on branded keywords of competitor brands? What do you think? So, yep, you know, Amazon advertising permits advertisers to bid on branded keywords of their brands and other brands as well. So for instance, you're selling a, let's see, uh, a spray, uh, spray bottle so they might have brands that you can include such as your competitors brands so or Amazon brands and Amazon basic uh, spray bottle so you can target those specific keywords bonus fact number two what are the steps that Amazon takes when Amazon receives a complaint about an intellectual property IP violation by a third-party seller including any steps you know it takes to verify the legit legitimacy of the claim so when an intellectual property claim is being submitted, Amazon verifies this submitter's um, uh, identification, the ID, and compares the asserted IP rights to the accused product or the content. Because sometimes, you know, some types of IP claims are given you know, really customized treatment. So for instance, copyright claims are handled according to the procedures prescribed by the Digital Millennium Copyright Act known as DMCA, you know, utility patent, patent claims are enforced uh, pursuant to court and agency orders or uh, in the absence of such as, you know, such orders. So these are resolved by the affected parties or resolved through Amazon's neutral utility patent evaluation process. It's quite a long one there. So if, you know, a violation is far, Amazon removes the infringing content or in some circumstances, such as in case of repeated violations, Amazon will suspend the offending seller's account. So Amazon will take action with respect to the violation. The goal is to provide clear communication to sellers, describing the policy violation that led to the suspension. And of course, still offers an appeals handled by a specialized team um, which this process you know, seller can tell Amazon if they believe a mistake was made so you can appeal through this um, uh, you can appeal if say for example you've been suspended and you can appeal and then make sure that you know if you believe a mistake was made or if you know there's a mistake um, that you were made just explain it to Amazon and the specialized teams will try to help you out there are ways to write appeals, so if you guys are interested to know about it, you know, shoot me an email and I might be able to help you out. So, final thoughts here. After looking at the 12 data driven facts, you know, or 14, and I'm going to give you take the account of two bonuses, you now have a better understanding of how Amazon ranks the products, create their private label products using, using aggregated data, uh, product listings, and many more. So, Make sure you know make sure you leverage on all these necessary updates and use it for your amazon business before we end this presentation just remember to take action today because a year from now you wish you had started today i wish you the very best for year 2020 sorry the year 2020 and I thank you for taking time to watch my presentation up until this end. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do enjoy creating it. And I hope you get a lot of values you know, and written down notes when you know, when you're watching this presentation. 
And if you definitely feel free to share this with your friends or your associates or any Facebook groups that you're in um, or any secret you know, mastermind that you're in so they benefit from it as well. And of course, if you can, do yourself and do yourself a favor, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this to help you scale and grow your Amazon e-commerce business. I wish you the very best of success with your Amazon business and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye guys.